Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an actual CPA simulation. Why do I say actual? Because this CPA simulation is released by the AICPA. The AICPA is the organization that administers the CPA exam. Specifically, this simulation will be a FAR simulation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures that cover all topics on the CPA exam. I do also cover hundreds of questions of CPA questions. On my website, you will have access to additional materials such as PowerPoint slides, notes, true, false, multiple choice, and 2,000 plus CPA questions. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, the CPA simulation and we'll work on it together. Okay, let's take a look at this CPA simulation. This CPA simulation, initially, it looks very intimidating, but you're going to see that once we boil it down to, it boils down to one simple concept that you need to learn before you sit for the exam. So this is another opportunity to remind you that just by answering multiple choice questions, that's not going to be enough for you to pass the exam. You have to understand the concept. Although you might answer... A a multiple choice question by mistake correctly when it comes to the simulation if you don't have understanding and what I mean by understanding it doesn't mean ha it, it does it has to be difficult you just have to understand the concept and once you understand the concept you can easily easily answer these questions actually they are sometimes easier than the multiple choice so basically in this problem let's go ahead and see what we are giving you are giving exhibits a letter from outside legal counsel let's take a look at it this is, we're gonna revisit them first, just I wanna show you what you have. You have a letter of credit as well. Let me just, this is a letter of credit, we'll look at it. You have an email regarding a loan guarantee, basically an email between two individuals. Email regarding letter of credit. Uh, letter from the state health and uh, safety agency. That's fine, that's fine, we have all of those. Let's see what we are at, what we are being asked to do. REF company is reviewing the accounting and disclosure requirement for its significant guarantees, commitment, and contingency, including litigation as of December 31st, year three. So the dates are very important. The financial statements are expected to be to be to be available to be issued February 10th, year four. So the balance sheet date is December 31st, year three. The report will be issued February 10th, year four. So dates are very important here. Use the following information in the exhibit above to determine the amount, if any, to be recognized and whether disclosure is required in REF financial statements as of and for the year ended December 31st, year 3. Unless otherwise specified, assume that no amount related to these guarantees, commitment, and contingency, including litigation, have been recognized in the financial statements as of December 31st, year 3. So simply put, they're giving you a bunch of information about contingencies, commitments, loan guarantees, and they want you to know they didn't do anything about them. They want you to tell us whether you should uh, disclose, disclose them, and whether you should recognize any amount. Simply put, this is based on a contingent losses. When do you recognize contingent losses? Remember, we have three probabilities. You know what? I think I should uh, I should go over the rules real quick because if I go over the rules, it's, it's going to trigger... Um, you know, it's going to help you feel a little bit more comfortable when you get a problem like this. So all you have to do is this. When it comes to loss contingencies, here's what you have to do. The company will have to determine, um, they have to estimate the probability of losing. So there is basically, they have three probabilities. Remote, possible, and probable. Okay? Now, you don't want to be doing this on the exam day. I'm just telling you what you need to do. If the, if, if the contingency is remote, no disclosure. We don't do anything. We don't even disclose. So if you don't disclose, we don't recognize. So basically, if the if we said there's no, uh, there's the, the case without a merit or there's no chance of losing, we don't even disclose. So the possibility is remote. Uh, the, if the possibility is remote. If it's possible, we are going to lose. If it's pos possible, possible, we will disclose. Now, how do you know it's possible? From the language, they'll tell you it's possible. If you see the word probable, then you have to be very careful. When it's probable, okay, you have to determine whether we know the dollar amount or we don't know the dollar amount. If we, it's a probable and we don't know the dollar amount, we don't know the, we cannot estimate the loss, we simply disclose. So when do we accrue? Well, if it's probable and we know the dollar amount, we disclose. Obviously, we have to disclose and 
the crew. So this is what you need to know for this for this simulation. Once you know these rules, which I think very simple rules, it takes five, 10 minutes to learn those rules, then you have to apply them. So that's why understanding is extremely important. I cannot emphasize this enough. And that's my philosophy when it comes to the CPA exam. You have to understand, you really have to know, you have to take your time. You cannot just wing it because the way they ask the questions, they test your understanding, not your memory anymore. Okay? So for each Brav guarantees commitment and contingencies, including litigation in the table below. So they have, you know, we have, we're going to have to deal with one, two, three, four, five, uh, six different things. Okay. In column B, indicate whether disclosure is required by clicking in the associated cell and selecting yes or no is appropriate. So for this question, we either, we either have to answer yes or no. So it's either yes or no for the first question, whether we disclose or, or we don't have to disclose. And in C, if we have an asset or a liability, if we have a liability, put the liability in, in parentheses, be careful, basically the amount. And if there's none, you put zero, enter zero. That's what they're asking you. So the first thing is being familiar with those, uh, with those simulation on the exam day, it will not intimidate you. So when you look at something like this for the first time, it's a little bit intimidating, but as you look at them and as you, as your confidence level go up before the exam, they're not as intimidating as they are. So let's go ahead and dive into the information. The first thing is they're talking about a copy, copyright infringement. Now what you have to do, you have to go up to these exhibits and look for information for the copyright, for the copyright infringement to determine based on our rules, do we have to disclose yes or no? And if we don't have to disclose, obviously we don't have to do anything. If we have to disclose, we have to determine whether we have to accrue a liability, accrue a liability. Okay, it's a copyright infringement. Let's start with the letter from the outside legal counsel. Let's see if there's anything about this copyright infringement. The following is an update on four matters uh, for which we, re we, retain, we retain to represent RAV. So this letter from, from A and B LLP, which are the, our lead counsel. Okay, so RAV is a defendant and a 6 million copyright infringement. So we, at least now we, we zoomed in on what we need to do. Um, uh, RAV is a defendant in a 6 million copyright infringement lawsuit brought by Beach Company in October year 3. Okay, so it started in October year 3, so it might be relevant to us. RAV, we offered, RAV has, has offered 1.5 million to settle the lawsuit, but Beach made a counter offer of 5 million. The case is not expected to go to the trial, and we believe that the loss is probable. Hold on, this is a keyword. They just tell you. At least here you have a disclosure. So immediately now, disclosure is yes. Now we need to know if we can estimate the loss. As of the date of this letter, negotiations are ongoing. Although we cannot determine the exact amount of the loss, we believe that the reasonable amount of the loss is between 2 million and 5 million. No amount within this range is more likely outcome than any other outcome. Okay, this is basically enough for me to answer the first question. Very simple, straightforward, that's it. I mean, you can scan the other information, make sure there is no updated information. But th if this letter, January 31st, Look, this letter, January 31st, 10 days before, we're going to issue the report. That's pra practically the latest information. The first thing we already determined, the answer is yes. So let's go ahead and the, ans the answer is yes. So for as far as this, we're going to have to disclose. That's it. You, 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 you gain some points. The question is, do you have to book a liability? And the answer is yes, you have to book a liability. Here they're giving you an estimate, 2 million and 5 million. And they're saying there is no... Uh, uh, no amount within the relevant range is more likely than not. Now, here you are not told you are following IFRS. You are told you are following GAP. If you're following GAP and there is no amount that's more likely outcome than any other amount, you would go with the lower amount. Therefore, you would book a liability of 2 million. Now, if it was IFRS, you would, you would find the average. Therefore, remember also to put the liability in parentheses. You don't want to do all this work, then show them the in, in, answer incorrectly. That's it. That's it. It should take you like two minutes. Once you look at this, it's probable. Definitely, I'm going to disclose. And there's an estimate. And I'm going to go with the lower estimate because it's it's no amount within this range is more likely than not. If there's any amount more likely, you would use that amount. But there's none. So we're done with this. The second the second question is about loan guarantee. So let's see if there's anything in the, in the legal letter about the loan guarantee. On September 15, product liability. I'll skip this. On October 15th, REF facility sustained significant damage. That doesn't look like a loan guaranteed. And something from the health and safety. I closed this exhibit. I don't need it. So I'm looking for the exhibit that deals with loan guarantee. 
email regarding loan guaranteed. Let's see what we have here. Okay, now we have an email and we have to interpret the email basically to determine what happened. We have two email, we have two individual replying. So you want to make sure you start with the first email. They're both on January 16th, January 16th, year four, January 16th, year four, which is after year end. And this email was at 9.45 and this email was at 11.50 a.m. So we're going to start with this email, obviously. Just I want you to understand how you approach this. That's why, because some people don't pay attention to these things. You have to pay attention. So controller. Ref company has fully guaranteed. So this is uh, to, to Ref company. And this is from Birko, the CFO at Birko. Okay. Chief financial officer of the other company. Ref company has fully guaranteed our outstanding half a million loan from Sunnytown Bank. Due to our deteriorating financial condition, we were unable to repay the loan, which was due on December 31st, year three. Okay. On January 15th, year four. Sunnytown Bank deliver us a notice of default in accordance with the terms of our loan. As a result of our default on the loan and our inability to pay, it's probable that Sunnytown will require REF to perform as guarantor. Now, here you have to know, if you guarantee the loan of others, okay, the minimum you have to do is to disclose. So the minimum, so immediately, once you guarantee the loan, I'm going to close this and say yes to the disclosure. I'll tell you why. So if you guarantee the loan, you always have to disclose that. You always have to disclose that. Now, the question is whether you had to book a liability. Well, guess what? Do you think you have to book a liability? Of course, you're going to have to book a liability. Okay, but the question, we're going to determine how much. Okay, so simply put, you'll always disclose when you have a loan. Now, do you have to book a liability and for how much? Let's see what the response was. Accounting manager, we just received a notice from the com from their company, an unrelated third party with respect to our loan guarantee we provided for the company. At the inception of the guarantee, we recognize a $150,000 liability for this guaranteed. Thank you. Now, that, okay, they said we, up front, we recognize 150 as a liability. But now, the whole amount is responsible for the whole amount. And this is before we are issuing the financial statement. So notice we knew about this January 16th. Okay, so what does that mean? We have to book a liability for the whole amount now. Why? Because we are responsible for the half a million. Therefore, it's a liability. We're aware of it before the issuance of the report. We have a liability. We have to recognize it. We are required to perform now. We are required to perform. We are responsible for half a million. In my opinion, pretty straightforward. Let's look at property insurance claim. I believe I saw something in the uh, exhibit from the outside council about this issue. So let's come, come up here. So it was about property insurance claim. So this is about product liability. It looks like this. It, look, it looks here. Okay. Property insurance claim on October 15th, year three. So with the year that's relevant for us, one of REF facilities sustained significant water damage. Okay. At, at your request, we, con we contacted the property insurance. At your request means the lawyer is speaking on your behalf. We contacted the property insurance carrier to check on the status of the 2.5 million claim that REF filed on November the 15th, year three. So we filed a claim a, a month later to get 2.5 million. On December 27th, year three, the property insurance carrier acknowledges that the loss appeared to be covered by the insurance policy. However, the property insurance stated that its adjuster is still reviewing the claim and does not expect to settle it until March 4. The property insurance uh, further indicate that any payment is subject to $125,000 deductible, including in the property insurance policy. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now, do you have to disclose something like this? Um, you're not losing, you're basically, you're expecting to receive money. Yes, you can disclose. If you want to disclose, you can disclose. So yes, you can disclose. Now, wh why do I say yes, you can? Because if you don't disclose, it's not a big deal. But if they're saying you yes or no, you have to say yes. Okay, but you, I mean, in the real world, let's assume you did not disclose it. That's good news. It doesn't matter. You didn't really, you're not, it's okay to hide, hide, to hide good news in a sense that, you're not really cheating anyone, but it's better to disclose it. Now, we are waiting to receive money. Do you do you accrue anything if you're waiting to receive money? And the answer is never. Okay, you're going to disclose it, but do not accrue again. Do not accrue some sort of a receivable that you're going to be getting this money. So the accrual is zero. You don't do anything. So simply put, accrued gain. There is no such thing as accrued gain. You don't accrue gain. Okay, if you're waiting to receive the money, wait until March. You receive the money and you'll book it. You debit cash, credit, whatever insurance proceeds, whatever you want to credit. Okay? But you do not book it before year end. So there's no such thing 
as contingency gain, okay, or accrued gain, okay? Good. Now we need to deal with the penalty from the state from the state health and safety agency. So we have to find out, you know, information about this topic. So let's go up here. And I do believe this is the loan guarantee. Letter from the state health and, and safety agency. Let's take a look at this letter. And it's dated February 5th. So this is five days before we issue the financial statement. This is as good as it's gonna get. Okay, this is letter from this state agency. The letter serve as a notice that you are being assessed a fine of 150,000 related to violation of the state health codes that were identified on November 20, 28, year three. So it's relevant for us at your manufacturing facilities located, blah, blah, blah. Our follow-up inspection on December 15th indicate that the violation were appropriately remediated and were no outstanding code violation at that time. That's fine. And guess what? Are we responsible for this 150? Yes, they told us they assessed the fine and they find the problem and they now we fixed it. So we still have to pay 150. Do we have to accrue this? Do we have to disclose? Sure, we have to disclose. The loss is definitely 100% guaranteed that we're going to lose. Therefore, we're going to have to say yes for the disclosure. Do we have to accrue it? Of course, we have to accrue a loss because it happens. It, 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 it happens during year three. So that's 150. Okay. Now we move to product lawsuit liability. We have to find out where, where, do, where do we have information about this topic. So let's go up here. Uh, looks like the letter from the outs, outside council. There was something about this, so let's go back here. Okay, on September 15th, on September 15th, year three, 6.5 million product liability lawsuit was brought against our company by a customer who sustained injuries while using one of our product. On the date of this letter, we have completed our initial discovery and believe that the lawsuit is without merit. What does it mean without merit? No chance we are going to lose. It's just basically they're trying to get money out of us. Given that the lawsuit lack a merit, we believe the possibility that Rev will be required to pay any amount, uh, will, will be required to pay any amount and the lawsuit is remote. They even give you the keyword remote. Companies get sued all the time. So if, they, if, if the lawyer tells you there's no chance a remote possibility, you don't even have to even disclose. So let alone, if once you have the answer is no here, the answer is zero here. If you don't disclose, obviously you don't accrue. The minimum you have to do is disclose. So here, because we're not, we're not going to be responsible for anything. So forget about it. There is no liability. Okay. Letter of credit. Let's talk about, let's look what we have for letter of credit. We have letter of credit and email regarding letter of credit. So we have to look at both letter of credit here. Issue date, 12-31. This is from Mega Bank Corp. This is from the bank. Expiration date, a year later. Practically, we have this letter of credit for one year. The beneficiary is the supply company. Amount available, 1.5 million. So basically, letter of credit is when we guarantee the trade of others, okay? Where the beneficiary is supply company. The beneficiary may present this letter of credit upon providing the following document documentation within 21 days of the purchase transaction. A bill of lading that indicate that the inventory has been properly boarded for transportation to the applicant's address, packaging slip, packaging slip signed invoice. Now, if you don't know what a letter of credit is, then right there, you need to know what that is, what this is. Basically, we're guaranteeing uh, that uh, the bank will finance the transaction for supply because we're guaranteeing this, okay? Please examine this instrument carefully. If you are unable to comply with the terms and the condition, please communicate with the applicant to arrange for an amendment. So this is basically what the letter is. They could, they could, we're backing them up for 1.5 million. All right, that's fine. Now we know what the issue is. Email regarding the letter of credit. Let's see what we have here. Uh, this is from the treasury manager at Trafco to the purchasing agent at Trafco, which is, Trafco is the company. So let's, let, let's look at this. January 3rd, year 4, so this is basically post year end in the afternoon, that's fine. Per your request, Megabank issued 1.5 million letter of credit dated December 31st for the purchase from supply company of raw material that, that are expected to be received in February of year 4. Please let me know if you need any additional information. All right, so basically what happened is um, we, we have a letter of credit, but as of December 31st, there was no activity against that letter of credit. If there's no activity, we don't really have to do anything in terms of accruing because there's no transaction. The question becomes, do we have to disclose? A letter of credit is very similar to, to, to loan guaranteed. So it's very similar to this idea right here, uh, loan guaranteed. And what did we say about loan guarantees? If you're guaranteeing someone else, you have to disclose. Minimum, you have to disclose. 
okay and since there's no nothing happened there was no delivery we're not really responsible for anything therefore we don't have to accrue anything the answer is zero okay so this is basically a simulation now it took me longer than to 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 resolve this simulation but on the exam day if you know the rules you know remote probable possible you know when do you have to accrue when do you have to disclose then it should not take you that much that much to uh, to complete to complete something like this always i'm going to go back to my always i'm going to go back to my uh, website to remind you look all these topics are covered in detail in my intermediate accounting course so if you go to my website it's not only you have access to the lectures and my specifically intermediate accounting too you'll have access to powerpoint slides um notes uh, true false multiple choice so you'll be able to understand this topic very well so when you see that simulation on the exam you're like bring it on i can do this I strongly suggest you subscribe, you study for your CPA one time. It's a lifetime investment. Subscribe, invest this money in your career. Good luck, and I'm here to help.